Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, like button, subscribe button. You can follow us there as part of Empire Media. And always, always, always much appreciated. I had an interview with former Washington head coach Jay Gruden on yesterday. Kind of gets lost in all the hubbub about the ownership. But go back, do me a favor, give that a listen, because he was really good talking about Terry McLaurin, Kirk Cousins, and the end of Cousins' time here, what he felt the team should have done instead of trying to keep him. And I also asked him about John Allen. He coached John Allen. I asked him about Taylor Heineke. He loves watching quarterbacks. So that's why I didn't get into what he thinks about Washington's defense or this or that. I asked him about people and things that he knew directly about with this team. There you go. So give it a listen, really good insight. But today I want to do kind of a bonus podcast because of all the ownership stuff going on in the sale. So I brought on Michael Phillips from the Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, Really good stuff on Richmond Times Dispatch. Give him a follow there or go read his stuff there. But I want to have on to discuss more about this ownership situation, what he thinks, when he what he thinks changed, maybe changed the discussion for the Snyders as far as how we got to this point, possible timelines, all that stuff. So I want to do that. So in, on Friday, I'll, I'll get back to Key's predictions. I'll have ESPN's Kevin Seifert on talking about the Vikings so we can get back to the actual talk about on the field stuff. But this is a big deal, folks. And I know you know that. I also want to ask him how he thinks this affects a possible stadium deal. So there you go. That's what we're going to talk about. So stay tuned because here I'm going with my conversation with Michael Phillips from the Richmond Times Dispatch. Well, I have America's podcast guest, Michael Phillips here. Michael, let's start with the big news about for the day. I mean, the biggest thing that's a huge shocker, Tressway Special Teams Player of the Week. What do you think? Player of the I mean, oh, that's the Player one. Of Player of the month. That's the one thing, if nothing else, you can count on Tressway around here. Not only that, told us a very funny story about Kirk Cousins the other day. You just, I mean, like we're all in chaos mode. Like they're going to sell the team. Chase Young's back. William Jackson's traded. Like Brian Robinson's, you know, shooter is caught. Then Tressway is just telling us a funny story about yeah. Kirk Cousins, man. Just some things you can set your clock to. It, it is. Nobody enjoys their life or their their you know, place in this realm more than Tressway. But. The real news, of course, was this, the sale announcement. I mean, we've both covered this for for the entire time. What was your level of surprise yesterday? A hundred percent. It was 100 percent surprise. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it and do the like, yeah, I'd been hearing rumblings. It, there were no rumblings. There were no rumblings. Uh, it, it came out of nowhere. Uh, total shocker. I mean, it just looked back on the 18th, the statement of defiance. You know, Jim Mercer is going to learn that they they don't need to sell the team and they won't. Um, certainly, I filed that away at the time. Like, boy, that sounds a lot like they'll never change the name and you can use all, all caps. caps. I mean, it, it certainly had those vibes to it. But even that was a seven year process from we'll never change the name to the changing of the name for it, it to pop out so quickly. It's it's a seismic game changer. I think everybody's still a little bit. Yeah, you know, I talked to so many people yesterday, as I know you did. And it, my question is always is this for real? Like everybody's just waiting. Like what's the catch when, when's the football going to get pulled back? You know, like what, what, what's the stipulation? And it's not a done deal by any stretch, right? but it sure seems a lot more real than it did 24 hours ago. Well, and the odds of them putting out that statement just to sell a minority share. What do you think that is? Yeah. I, I, I think, I think if they can get their price, they, they will sell the whole thing. Now, look, if, if somebody drops in and says, Here's a billion and a half dollars. I'd love thirty percent of this operation. They'll do it, of course. They'll they'll make that deal. Um, and, and you know, I think that would save face with the NFL. That person ain't walking through the door. Anybody who's got a billion and a half is playing for the whole thing now. It's it's a little bit like you know when a guy when they when you know a team's going to cut a guy, you don't trade for him. Right. Um, you know, you you don't you, you wait for them to cut. That sense is in the air that the whole thing's going to be available. I think that that's the mindset of people with a billion dollars cash, which is which is just, I mean, an insane amount of money to think about. They're playing for the whole thing now. They're not playing for the partial. And that's, that's the thing, because the other factor with the minority ownership is 
first of all, this is one thing you'd hear from other, that I'm sure you heard some of the similar, would anybody want to do that with Dan Snyder right now, given all that's going on? Um, and, you know, and then you have no say in anything. Yeah. It's, to, to get into partnership with a guy who is being investigated by, I mean, let's count it, um, the NFL, Congress, the DEA is still poking around, you know, there's the NFL PA wrap up from that. We've got the attorney general, uh, two attorneys general, I think two. Um, yeah. we've got, as of yesterday, uh, your guys' report about um, the uh, Eastern mm -hmm. district mm -hmm. uh, attorney's office. Um, so, I mean, just off the top of my head, that's six. Like is anybody who's, anybody who's got a billion and a half dollars, they're, they're not saying, oh, well, here, Dan, here's my billion. And I'll swing by in a few years to see how it went. Like, you know, they, they're playing for the whole thing now. And, and, you know, we'll talk about the price, but it, I mean, I think they will get their price. And so I don't think that will be the obstacle to this happening. I, I, I would be shocked if they don't get there. In fact, I'll be surprised if it doesn't go above what people, what people think just because, and this I'm going to ask you too, the stadium side of it increases the ability to somebody who comes in right away to make a lot of money. What's the impact with yep. the looming stadium stuff on this, do you think? I mean, look at Dan Snyder's great lament. He inherited FedEx Field. He spent his entire ownership tenure in a building he didn't design that that turned out to be a very bad place to play football. And and, and that undid him in a lot of ways. It, you, can, you can call your shots here. You can build whatever you want to build, wherever you want to build it. RFK? I think RFK is back in play. Get back Anacost in. Anacostia Park, I think that's in play. You know, prime Virginia sites, absolutely in play. Virginia's wanted to play ball on this for a long time. They're coming to the table. And you know Maryland's pushed National Harbor for a long time. I think National Harbor is a great spot for the stadium right there between the two on the water taxi line view of the Capitol. I, I mean, there, there's so many good places you can build it. I think that's a feature, not a bug here. So, oh, you, you, oh, you know, yeah. you, you, oh, you know, you have to spend another billion on the state. Yes, if, if these people have the money you get to build it the way you want it, the owner suite, the way you want it. And you get a Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, right. I, I think about LA and Kroenke building that stadium and, and then building McVay and, you know, giving up all those draft picks. It was for that moment. He, he had everybody in Hollywood over at his house, watching his team play in the Super Bowl to, to get to host a Super Bowl in DC, the first one ever, the president's going to be there. Um, you know, it's going to be a who's who they're going to be in your box, hanging out with you. Uh, it's hard to put a price tag on that. Well, and also if they build their little, if this, whoever comes in, if they want to, if if it indeed is a full owner, right? If they want to do the little city around there, you're going to increase it even more. So that's why I say I think this becomes a walking to me a gold mine of an opportunity. Oh, no question. Yeah, and you know we we've talked about this so much with the Commanders. When one of the hurdles on the RFK site was they wanted it to be just a football stadium the right. city did and the team of course saw the value and going for the full village so many teams have done that now we were in chicago recently the bears you know moving out to the suburbs they yep. want the bears hotel the bears restaurant the year round you know do training camp there it's just such a profitable operation the packers have done that so well uh for those of you who have been to lambo you know like that that's a 365 day a year money making machine there's good you shine up the lombardis put put them out every day all year um, it, it's it, it absolutely a money-making opportunity. And you talk about franchise values. I mean, the Panthers were bought four years ago for $2.8 billion. They, I mean, that's a steal now. Like what, what David Tepper got them for, which was an insane amount of money, is a steal compared to what we're about to be talking about. Well, also Denver was what, 4.65, and that was finalized in August. Yep. This is a, this is a more lucrative situation, don't you think? Yeah. If you don't sit down at the table with $5 billion, you're not getting invited to the table. That's I, don't think that's I, only have four, I have 4.9. I can't get there. I, 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 I apologize. I, I thought it was very rude of Pete to not chip in as the minority owner and get you, get you over the top with, with his, uh, with his recent gambling winnings. Um, it, it's, you know, I, I will see where the number ends up because you, you know, there are a lot of NFL rules at play here, you know, that, that you can't take it all on in debt. Um, and even rich people don't have their money sitting around right. at bank of America in a checking account. You gotta, you gotta unwind the finances. Um, you know, we'll talk about names. I'm sure, you know, Bezos has, has some hurdles there. 
the TV deal obviously being one, the fact that Dan doesn't like the Washington Post is a very real hurdle. Um, you'll, you'll hear Michael Dell mention that's another guy who could cut the check, no questions asked. I'm certainly very intrigued. In the Denver process, Roger Goodell very much wanted a black owner. There's no black right. owner in football tried to nudge two people uh, that we know of towards that. Right. Um, I would be curious if the NFL would act as the bank to help make it happen, especially in DC, a great market to have minority representation in the owner's box. Um, I, I could see Roger really making a push, maybe waiving some of those rules uh, to say, Hey, let, let's level the playing field a little. Let's, let's get this done. They've stepped in here before. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that's, that's, that's a big deal. So, you know, here's the other thing, too. As a reporter, we've covered all these shows. How would you describe, and it's even beyond the last year, but even just the last year, what it has been like as a reporter? I mean, I, I, I said this yesterday. Ron Rivera yesterday um, gave a very touching tribute to his mom who died last week. Um, that, that, I mean, it was really heartfelt, and I, I hope everybody got to see it. The team put the video out. Um, we also had Chase Young returning to practice, which is a very big storyline. Former number two draft pick, I might remind you, kind of a big deal. Uh, William Jackson got traded two days ago, 48 hours ago. That's a big deal, unwinding that. Uh, and all of the oxygen just got sucked out of the room immediately. Yeah. Like, there there was no second-place story yesterday. Like, it, it was probably Chase if there was one, but it was a distant second-place story. This, this is something people have been, been waiting for for a long time, but... It, I mean, just, you know, this, the day to day of covering this beat, when you leave the stadium at seven o'clock after a game, you know, one o'clock game, we write our story about the game. You're just waiting for the call. Hey, you know, the railing burst, look into that. Hey, this thing, ha like whatever the thing of the day is, you, you're just waiting to hear about it and, and spring back into action. It's, it, we're all twitchy at this point, you know, oh. there, there's no, there's no chill. And I, I mean, look in the last year, it's Congress, DEA more Congress, FTC, you know, uh, attorney generals. I mean, this, and you know, there was a name change announcement. I mean, the name change announcement is like, oh yeah, that happened too, because there's always something going on and it's just, it becomes mentally exhausting, but you know. So, some, some of that plays in their favor too, like this DEA thing, like if that happens in any other market, like there's deep dives into it. I think there's, there's, you know, like, people really fixate on it and what it means. And like, that's Tuesday here. Like that's, it was, you know, it, it, there was no off season. There was no off season this year. Um, there wasn't one last year. We're now kind of in year three of just continuous news. And I think part of this, you know, the, the selling and the momentum against Dan is, is just this sense of exhaustion, not just locally, but, but nationally just, it's a steady, drumbeat out of here and i i know people say i oh, you know blame the media or whatever and it, you know like obviously we're we're writing about this stuff but this is not normal this this is not it's how the other stuff. 31 cities work and it's all it's always one story tops the other and it could be the same week <laughs> it could be the same day <laughs> yeah, yeah well yeah, yes you know and now you also wrote a column on this and you use the october 23rd as the line of demarcation for you explain and i know why you said but explain yeah, yeah. why yeah, absolutely. So so the 18th was the statement of, you know, they won't sell the team. Um, and, you know, we'll bring Tanya into the chat here for a minute. Tanya Snyder has always been supportive of Dan. And, you know, I wouldn't say we know her well, but we've gotten to know her. And we've talked to people who know her. She, she's very friendly. One of the reasons they put her in as co-CEO was she, she walks around the building. She knows people's names. She learns people's names. She greets them. Those kind of little things. Yeah. Um, and, and the, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you know, she is the one who created that for the whole NFL. Um, that's not a publicity stunt. That's not a photo op. That, that's something she cares deeply about. That's her thing. Um, and she's done a very good job with it. Obviously, you know, the league has made a very big push out of it over the years. Um, and, and she's always been supportive of Dan. She's taken on this co-CEO role. She's always played to friendly crowds, though. I mean, the biggest Tanya controversy was the Adam Schefter podcast mm -hmm. where she made the comments about being a victim. Those didn't go over well. Um, but, but that wasn't in a public arena. You know, I think about, she came to Richmond during training camp and they gave some money to a youth football team. She, she was applauded. She, people shook hands. Um, she's shown on the video board during that game. It's the breast cancer awareness thing. Hey, look, you know, look, look, look what we did. And the crowd just starts booing spontaneously. And I, what, it wasn't a couple people. Uh, you, you were there. It was loud. It was loud. 
And, and then they start chanting, sell the team. And I, I think that for somebody who is not emotionally invested, you know, to the extent that Dan is, we talk about Dan and, you know, his dad inspiring him and him wanting to leave his team to the kids. She, she didn't have that level of emotional investment. That That's a point where you say, this is not worth it. Like what we're going through right here, this isn't worth it. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, everybody wonders the same thing because there was that October 18th statement and I will say, you know, over the last, I never thought he would sell because everybody that would, that you talk to, you know, this too, like his identity is tied up in this team. It's, it's his identity. It's his identity. But it was always like, if somebody could get him, maybe it would be his wife. Um, maybe the family would nudge him that way. I don't know. We still don't know exactly why everything's just a guess at this point, yeah. but you know, so I never thought he would sell because of all of that. But then over the last you know, maybe six to seven months, not that I thought he would sell, but that I thought the chance of him having to sell had certainly increased. But to what extent it was hard, it was always hard to say, would they have enough votes? And would the owners really bring that to a vote? That was always the big key. And now maybe they don't have to. Yeah, and this was always going to be different than Jerry Richardson because Jerry Richardson was such a, a civic pillar in Carolina that when they went to him quietly and said, hey, we'll make this go away for you, but we need you to walk away. It was an easier bargain to make. You know, Dan doesn't have that reputation in the community to lean on. He's when, when he cashes out his $6 billion check, he's not, he, he's not going to be like man about town. You know, I'm sure he'll do charitable endeavors, but, but he's not like Jerry Richardson was just kind of in, in the fabric of the community there. And, and I would toss the name change on, on this pile as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dan bought the Redskins and Dan loved yeah. going to Redskins games with his dad and, and Dan wanted to leave the Redskins to his kids. And um, that team doesn't exist anymore. And, and, you know, when people say it feels like an expansion team, it's, it's hard for me to disagree. They, 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 no, they, dropped, the le- they dropped the legends out at homecoming. Like that just feels like a different world and a different era, man. I, I didn't live through it. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't, I wasn't here for 91. I, I wasn't here for, for any of those Super Bowl seasons, but, you know, it just feels different wearing a commander shirt. You know, it's 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 not the team he bought. It's still funny to say it, to be honest. But, you know, yeah. funny thing is, like, I grew up in Indi- Cleveland Indians fan, and I still am. They're now the Guardians. But a difference is they look the same. Like, the, the hats have the C is shaped a little bit differently, but they've changed the C over the years. It's not a big deal. The Guardians is in a script, just like the Indians were. So there's not you – know, I never felt like I was watching a different team because it was the same players. I think the other thing is there wasn't the level of bitterness or toxicity around the team that that helps you adopt. Like, okay, I, maybe you like, or don't like the name, but you can still like the team. And I think because there's not all this other stuff swirling about them so that, but you're right. And the other thing with this too, is he wanted part of this stadium stuff was his legacy. His legacy now would be changing the name or having to change the name or whatever, however you want to frame it. Sure. It, it, in Cleveland, you know better than me. It felt more voluntary too, and less forced. Which, well, which I the, think... the team, the team did that on their own. Yeah. It was not a forced thing, you know. Because you look at the Braves, you look at the Chiefs, you look at the Tomahawk Chalk, Tomahawk Chop, and all that stuff. All that stuff still goes on, and they thought they were going to be the start of a change. And I don't think they are. I think they're going to be a, a, a vol- solo voluntary change. Yeah, I, I, you know, maybe there's a question for down the line. But if you're the new owner, do you rebrand again? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, don't I know. just don't, I just With don't the get the sense commanders has stuck. Oh, yeah. no, no. Despite Mando, the dog or Manders or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah, I agree. So anything else, like, where do you, I know this it may be hard to have a timeline. How long do you think this is going to take? Yeah. You know, I, you look at the nationals and it looks like the nationals, we're able to go start to finish in 12 months and now we're just tied up with the mass and litigation that won't happen here. And, and, you know, part of that is, you know, the NFL is so buttoned up in everything it does. It, it will be a clean transition. I, it feels overly optimistic to say this could happen at the league meeting in April. You know, that that's when things happen. That, we go to the league meeting I... every April. We'll, we'll be in Phoenix in April at the league meeting. That's when things happen. Um, that's when the bills got their new stadium this year. Um, you know, that that is where big league events happen and, and new owners are unveiled and things of that nature. That feels aggressive. Um, but but I also don't bet against Roger Goodell. Um, he's a guy who put on the draft in the middle of the pandemic. He's, he's the guy who, you know, has steered the league through so many things. 
So I, I, I will call it unlikely, but not impossible um, that, that we get some kind of announcement at the owners meetings. I, I think it's in everybody's interest to have a finite number of lame duck season, so to speak. And, and then the announcement was crafted in a way that gave them the out of, you know, they're, they're still the owners and, and they're, they're reserving the right to say we're still the right. owners. Um, but, but, you know, you go into an off season, what do you do next off season? I don't think there's a decision to be made about Rivera. I think he comes back, but if Especially Rivera says, case. yeah, you know, even if they pilot this thing in at eight and nine, I think Rivera's coming back. Um, what if he wants to, to make a Russell Wilson style signing? What if he wants you, it, it's tough to operate a team in limbo. Um, so I, I think be every, everybody's interest to get that resolved as soon as possible. Um, but I, I think there will be, you know, uh, I think Florio's report was there were four, five bidders on the Broncos who who went to four billion. Um, so there, there's, you know, Kroenke being one of them. Obviously, there's there, there's four people you call today. Um, you know, the two minority owners, um, the the two black owners that, that Goodell's interested in. Um, your, your obvious names, your, your Bezoses and Dells and and, and Sergey Brim, I, I think is his name from Google, who's a Maryland guy. Uh, you know, I don't think it. I don't think you have to empty the role. Of here i think there's probably about 200 people in the world who who can sit at this table so i, I think you can winnow it down pretty quickly well that's a, and that's what i was going to say too i think that'll help the timeline when when the panthers did it they got the, that done fairly quick yeah. and i that's why i wondered here because denver just went through this or the league just went through this with denver how much that may help expedite this process um and i think there will be people jumping at this one because of the potential value to you know, to increase your value immediately. So. It, 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 and it's not monetary value either. Like Dan did great monetarily. He turned an eight hundred million dollar investment into six billion or whatever this is going to be. He beat the stock market. He he did very well. But from from a cachet perspective, he bought a three time Super Bowl winner and couldn't replicate that success and earn the scorn because of it. You're now buying low. You know, you're buying a team right. low, and if you can turn it into anything. The glory's all yours. And that stadium, it's all yours. Like you there's a real ego stroke here. They'll be building statues to this guy, and they can be it can be legitimate, not to well, whatever. We won't go there. So <laughs> anyway, let's end on that one right there. Michael, thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon. Absolutely. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Michael for joining me, and thank you as always for listening. I'll be back on Friday with more talk about the Commanders, but this time on the field, keys, predictions, and a look at the Vikings with ESPN's Kevin Seifert. Talk to you next time.